Our first one is the School District of Manatee County, Superintendent Rick Mills. Our next valedictorian partner is the Suncoast Credit Union Foundation, Lori Marandella. Another valedictorian partner, Bells, Karen Phillips. Harvest United Methodist Church, Steve and Catherine Price. The Tampa Bay Rays Foundation, Suzanne Lukey. Is Suzanne here? The Bradenton Kiwanis Club, Ed Nichols. Our salutatorian sponsors, the Early Learning Coalition, Andrew Miner. Another salutatorian sponsor, the Kiwanis Club of Lakewood Ranch, Chuck Carey. Manatee Memorial Hospital Foundation, Vernon Desir. Another salutatorian sponsor, Medallion Homes, Carlos Baruf. Neal Communities, Pat Neal. Another salutatorian sponsor, Wendy Laster Chorez, Scholarship Fund, Barry Dunn, and Frank Chorez. Good morning. About return. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the 8th Annual Take Stock in Children Leadership uh, Prayer Breakfast. And the first person I would like for you to give a round of applause for is the Executive Director of that organization, Diana Dill. Diana. Uh, uh, Diana is one of those special people that does a special job and. Uh, we thank you, the children thank you, the community thanks you, Diana, and uh, we appreciate you very, very much. We have a great, great lineup for you this morning. I got that line from Coach Hurdle, lineup. Um, and the very first person, um, well, we're going to go with the committees. The committee that met for this prayer breakfast, um, they met every week for almost three months and were sold out. And we've sold out for the last several years. We're looking for a bigger venue, actually. Uh, but our committee consisted of Peg Delgado, Jane Grace, Sandy Haas Martin, Brenda Harvey, Walter Miller, Blanca Mosco, and Marie O'Connell. Can we have a round of applause for those people? <laughs> Take Stock in Children is divided into two boards. Uh, the first board is a community council board uh, chaired by Elaine Graham. Would all the community council members please stand and we'll give you a round of applause. The Take Stock in Children Board of Directors is chaired by Michael Corley and would all those board members please rise. 
The Take Stock team consists of Bethany Lynch, Mariella Carrillo, Amanda Broadway, Kelly Suba, Susan Knowles, and Diana Dill. And thank you all very, very much. Most of all, I'd like, I'm up here real shortly, um, uh, but I'd like to thank all of you in the audience who have made this event possible. It's people like yourselves that help us financially, volunteering, uh, just in numerous uh, uh, different ways. But we would not be able to function and to be as successful as we are and putting children through, uh, helping them with mentors through secondary school and then moving them on to college and uh, afterwards. Um, I'm going to turn the program now over to a man with one of the biggest hearts in Manatee County, uh, Mr. Vernon DeSeer. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and enjoy your breakfast and Mr. Vernon DeSeer. Morning everyone, great to see you. Rain held up and everything, just like we asked for. Our first uh, item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be brought to us by the Superintendent of the School District of Manatee County, Mr. Rick Mills. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, he took the easy way out. <laughs> you didn't come out here. We told it that we practiced everybody coming out, so he just took the easy way and just stood back there. Um, next, we have our invocation um, by Police Chief of the City of Palmetto, Rick Wells. Uh, but as he's coming here, I, I just wanted to ask you to remember uh, Gene Witt and the Witt family. Uh, Mr. Witt fell earlier uh, this week, um, and uh, uh, hospice has been called in there. And so we want to keep him. And our thoughts and prayers. Uh, what a what a great uh, mentor and inspiration he has been uh, to so many of us, Mr. Well. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour asking for your your blessing and your help as we gather together. We pray for your guidance in the matters at hand, and we ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther, to be the best we can be as we focus on the needs of our children in our community. We now ask your blessings upon the food that we are about to eat. And we ask this in your precious and heavenly name. Amen. I'd like to uh, uh, bring up our mayors. Uh, they are very supportive of our organization. Uh, Mayor uh, Wayne Poston and Mayor Shirley Groover Bryant uh, from the city of Palmetto and Mayor Poston from the city of Bradenton to give you your welcome. We have a round of applause. Morning, everyone. Welcome um, to the city of Bradenton. We're glad you're here. Uh, I have with me the mayor of Palmetto, Shirley Bryant. She gets a two-hour pass to be in Bradenton, and then she has to be back <laughs> after break. <laughs> but thank you all for coming. This is important work that you all do, and. Uh, I don't think there's anything more important than taking care of children, taking care of kids, helping them become really good, productive citizens and building this country. So thank you for all you do. And uh, we're going to hear from Clint Hurdle, who's uh, he's just a terrific coach. He's a f great father, and he'll bring us a terrific message. So thank you all. always have to pull him down just a little bit after after Wayne. 
Um, I'd just like to say again, welcome to the uh, 2015 Leadership Brec Prayer Breakfast. And um, I, I have to comment on one thing. What a nice problem to have for parking and accessibility, really, for this many people that are this committed to the youth in this community. Is that not a great problem to have? I just want to say... We are so blessed to have this type of people in our community that care so much. I, I just want to uh, notice that uh, to everybody, I see faces that are here from before, and that means that you've been here in the past and you get it. You know what the goal is for Take Stock and Children, and you're committed and you're coming back. And for those of you that are new today, um, Welcome, and you're going to hear messages today that will bring you back year after year, I'm sure. And um, just, I appreciate everybody taking the time out of their day because I know you're very, very busy. And when you leave here, I hope you take with you the fact that you've been able to help a lot of the youth. None of us individually is going to particularly change the world, but we can make an impact one life at a time in helping these young people. So thank you, everyone, for being here, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, mayors, and appreciate all you do for Take Stock and Children. Next up is um, Ryan Pamitra. I hope I said that right. Brian Pamitra, representing the uh, Honorable U.S. Senator Marco Rubio. And uh, Ryan will say a couple words from uh, Washington, D.C., and, and we uh, welcome you here, sir. Thank you. thank you, and thank you, everyone, for having me today. I'm sorry that the senator is not able to join us himself, but he has sent me with a short message, which I will read. Dear friends, it brings me with great pleasure to welcome you to the 8th Annual Leadership Prayer Conference to benefit Take Stock and Children of Manatee County. I am proud to recognize the attending local dignitaries, business, religious, educational, and community leaders. I applaud you and Take Stock and Children for your steadfast commitment to helping young adults in the Manatee area. The education, mentors, and scholarships you provide will help equip young people with the tools necessary for future success. Although I cannot be with you in person, please accept my best wishes for a productive gathering. I look forward to hearing of your future successes. Signed, Senator Marco Rubio. Thank you, Ryan, and we appreciate the uh, Senator's uh, letter and his support. Uh, the next gentleman up, representing Congressman Vern Buchanan, our local uh, Congressman, uh, many of you know him, Gary Tibbetts. Gary? Thanks for being here. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to be here today representing Congressman Buchanan, who is in Washington today. But first off, I want to thank Diana Dill. She is the rock. She, is, uh, she does a great job with Take Stock and Children. <laughs> but I want to thank take stock in children for giving low-income students the opportunity to get a great education. You know, as someone who grew up in a blue-collar family, worked his way through college, went on to become a successful businessman and a member of Congress, Vern Buchanan understands the value of a good education. He, too, benefited from a mentor who set focuses on him set the goals, and had him achieve them. And we thank all these mentors who motivate the students and hold them accountable. We thank all the donors whose generous contributions make this possible. The congressman once heard at the Boys and Girls Club, and I think it was Kyle Weeks that said this when he was ahead of it, that the children are 25% of our population but they are 100% of our future. So we pray that they reject a life of drugs and crime, get good grades, and realize their dreams. But let's thank and pray for everybody in this room 
for the love and support that they provide this organization and the children that they service. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, we have some, um, I'm not a good, as good at this as Bernie, but we have some elected officials attending this morning, and if uh, you'd hold your applause until I get through each group, and then we'll give them all a round of applause. We have County Commissioners uh, Robbins D. Sabatino, uh, Commissioner uh, Larry Bussell with his wife Edie, uh, Charles Smith, John Chappie, Vanessa Ball, Betsy Banak, and Carol Whitmore. If we could have a round of applause for all of those <laughs> county commissioners. <laughs> got, got all seven. That's something. There you go. City of Bradenton, we have uh, Mayor Wayne Poston, of, co of course. Mayor. Gene Brown, Councilman. And Patrick Roth, Councilman. If we give them a round of applause. For the city of Palmetto, we have Shirley Gruber Bryant, the mayor, and Jonathan Davis, a commissioner. <laughs> From the school board, we have Superintendent Rick Mills. We have uh, new school board member Charlie Kennedy, uh, school board member David Minor, school board member Karen Carpenter, school board member Bob Gauze, and new school, school board member Mary Cantrell. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> We have, we have all the school board members here. That's wonderful. Uh, City of Anna Maria, Dan Murphy, the mayor. Is he Dan's here? Thank you. Okay, if I missed anyone, it's Vernon's fault, and I apologize. <laughs> okay. Uh, part of um, um, putting this together each year, uh, the fun part is who gets to do the prayers. And we try to be diverse, and we try to give... Uh, different individuals who have uh, larger congregations um, the, uh, uh, the chance to come up and do their prayer. So the first prayer, uh, or uh, I, I guess it's prayer, spiritual matters is how we've titled it to be politically correct, is by um, Rabbi Howard uh, Simon. Uh, he is the leader of the Jewish Federation Community of Relations Council. And when I called around to find out who the most important person in this organization was it was you rabbi simon so if we could have a round of apl applause for rabbi howard simon oh lord we come before you this day in prayer for our community for our country for our world and for ourselves we look about us and, and what do we see? Hatred reigns supreme. Death and destruction are everywhere. Nations rise up against nations and the result is mayhem and more death. It should not be. There must be a better way. We turn to you in our concern. Tears stain our cheeks, dismay furrows our brow, bewilderment captures our heart. A better way, O oh Lord, we seek from you a better way. Where there is war today, help us to find peace. Where there is distrust today, help us to find a renewal of faith. Where there is destruction today, lead us to rebuild for a better tomorrow. Centuries ago, the psalmist faced the same difficulties that plague us. The psalmist rose before you, O Lord, and asked the question, Lord, who may sojourn in your tent? Who may dwell in your holy mountain? You heard the question. You sensed the depth of concern, and you answered the words that live with us today, words that can bind up our wounds, that can turn hatred into love, malice into righteousness, evil into good. We hear these words again this day. May we follow them, heed them, live them, as did our forefathers. Centuries ago, your words still have meaning today. 
Your words, O Lord, bring a renewal of spirit. Today in this house, we bend the ear and vow to follow your directions as we hear your words again. He who lives without blame, who does what is right and in his heart acknowledges the truth, whose tongue is not evil, was never done harm to his fellow, or borne reproach for his acts toward his neighbor, for whom a, a contemptible man is abhorrent, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who stands by his oath even to his hurt, who has never lent money on interest or accepted a bribe against the innocent, the man who acts this way shall never be shaken. Hear the words of the Lord. Let each of us be that man, be that woman, be that child. Act thusly, follow the path of the divine, and you will not be shaken. May such be so for each and every one of us. May such be so for our world. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, next up, uh, one of the uh, fastest growing community churches, Bayside Community Church, we have Bernard Scott, the pastor. Mr. S Reverend Scott. I want to read a passage found in Philippians chapter 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace be with you. God, today we ask that this world, that this community would be filled with your love, that hope would be restored, that your peace would reign, and that, God, you would help us to walk out the life that you designed for us to live. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, next up, representing St. Stephen's Episcopal School, their chaplain, uh, Father Nathan Speck Ewer, a uh, prayer for our community, state, and nation. Father Nathan. Good morning. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you see your children growing up in what is at times a confusing and unsteady world. As we gather this morning for breakfast, side by side with others for prayer and thanksgiving, we ask that your love and power renew us. Help us to know and see that you are indeed doing a new thing here in our community, state, and nation. We are blessed to be a blessing that prayer together makes a difference not only for ourselves, but for those for whom we pray and those to whom we give. And let us not, Lord, confuse as those who have come before us have said, let us not confuse prayer as a substitute for action. May the bonds of our common humanity that unite us both to the living and the dead, and those who are even yet to be in this world, may these bonds today, this morning, be strengthened for the work that we do beyond this place as we leave these doors. May the places of our common ground that we share in our state 
and nation and community be clarified and renewed. May your dreams and visions of our state, community, and nation be stirred by your visions and your dreams. For we are grateful, Lord, for the gift of living in this land and in our own time and in the ways that we can for making it better. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm Diana Dill, the director for Take Stock in Children of Manatee County. It is an honor and a joy to see all of you here today. Take Stock in Children is a powerful and proven program that helps students by providing scholarships, mentors, and hope. The scholarships are provided by our community and they're matched dollar for dollar by the Florida Prepaid College Foundation, thereby doubling the impact to our community. The mentors. The mentors are the heart of our organization. They are the ones that make us successful. If you are a current mentor, or if you've mentored for us or anyone else in the past, would you please stand so we could recognize your contribution now? Thank you. We greatly appreciate your time and investment in another person. And hope. The hope is the children. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The children are our hope. The hope for a better day, hope for a better tomorrow. 90% of all of the Take Stock in Children students are the first ones in their families to attend college. 20% of our Take Stock in Children students are still the first ones in their families to graduate high school. The hope is in the children. Katie is an excellent example of the hope we have for our future. Her persistence and determination make us proud that she is a Take Stock scholar. Please welcome Katie Perez and her dedicated mentor, Deanna Levengood. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Katie and I'm a senior at Manatee High School. My mentor is Deanna Levengood and has become more than just a mentor or a friend, but someone I consider part of my family. From the first time we met, she appeared to me as someone with a bright personality and with an amazing character that made me believe that she's the person that will help me improve myself and guide me to a brighter future. From that moment, I knew instantly that we connected and at the time passed by, what I believed with the first time we met came true. Deanna has not only helped me through my academics, but has been there when I most needed her. My parents dropped out at an early age from school, not even finishing high school. And in their home countries, kids can drop out as early as elementary school in order to help support their families. With their difference of education and the minimal English comprehension, it made it, it, made it hard for me to be able to ask them for help in many, any of my classes. This language barrier on top of their limited education made it hard for me and for them to help me further in my education because they haven't made it as far as I have. It's tough knowing that being the first to go to college I don't have the insight in what to expect when I'm there, nor do I have the advice in order to make it through it. I know what I want to be in the future, but to get there, I had no clue. Although my parents lacked the education and experience to provide me with advice on my future, they loved me dearly and recognized that I needed help from someone. With the help of t Stock and Children Mentoring Program, my mentor guided me through my high school years and has motivated me to participate in extracurricular activities and has kept me on track on my grades. Deanna has taught me that although academics should be the main go um, goal, that it's extremely important to be a well-rounded individual. Due to her advice, I've joined HOSA Club and have participated in AHEC Health Professional Summer Academy last year. 
My mentor became my savior. She worked with me in the classes that I needed help in, gave me advice about college based on her experiences, and has, has been the one person who has encouraged me to push further beyond what I thought I could do. But I wouldn't have met my mentor if it wasn't for TSOC and children. This college has given me hope, courage, and the will to aim higher. I thought that college with being ex be expensive, that in having a minimum wage family, would I be able to afford it? <coughs> T-Stock and Children's Scholarship assured me that I can go to college, that I can have a brighter future. It's because of the scholarship that I plan to attend USF and majoring in biology and following the medical route in the goal of becoming a pediatrician. I wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't for the support of my family or the, the help needed from my incredible mentor, Deanna Levengood, and the T-Stock and Children program. Thank you for changing my life, for giving me the opportunity to go to college, and for giving me a future. Now I have to try to talk, I guess. <laughs> I'll be brief, but I, I want to let you all know um, what it is to be a mentor. I know that I, it was beautiful to be able to see how so many of you stand up who have been a mentor in the past. And this is um, one of the greatest ways to give back to your community and has been a very wonderful experience for me. This is a, you're investing in the children, investing in the future, and instead of being reactive about the problems and complaining about the problems of society. This is a way to be proactive and create a better community. It is, it is our duty as citizens to give back to our community, and it is it's good for your business, it's good for your family, and it's just good for your soul, period. So I encourage all of you to, to participate in, in this wonderful program. It's been a fabulous opportunity, and, and Katie, I'm so proud that you used thought you were right behind me and you're around the corner there. <laughs> but you can go back around the corner. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. But very, very proud of you. It's been it's been such a blessing to see you, you know, grow over these past four years. And I, I hope the advice that I gave you was good and not just Definitely. silly. So but 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 we'll see. And uh wish um wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh we do, you know, there's a lot of a lot of uh support from everyone in the community, from Kiwanis and everything. And right now we'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Ed Nichols for a special announcement. Good morning. My name is Ed Nicholas. I'm the president of the Bradenton Kiwanis Club. This is the 100th anniversary of Kiwanis. This is the 100th year of Kiwanis giving back to the community and is in that spirit of 100 years of giving that the Bradenton Kiwanis Club would like to make the following challenge. We are pleased to donate $10,000. We are pleased to ask that you match that $10,000. Every donation that you make will go to scholarships for the next 30 days. Uh, uh, the Kiwanis Club of Bradenton will uh, match every donation up to $10,000. So please give back. On a personal note, I was born and raised in Manatee County. My father died when I was two. I was the youngest of five, and my mother was pregnant with my younger brother at the time. It was because of mentors and community leaders like you that my family not only survived, but we thrived. Um, it was people like you and agencies like Take Stock and Children that allowed uh, my siblings and I to have two CPAs, a high school teacher, a bank vice president, a doctor, and of course a judge. So mentoring works. There are cards on your table if you'd like to become a mentor. There are cards like on your table if you want to donate and match our $10,000 grant uh, scholarship um, monies. Uh, continue to do the good work. Take stock in children. Congratulations on a wonderful breakfast. Good morning.
Okay, how exciting. 10,000 match. Don't forget to fill these out. We'll add them up later. Okay, music selection. He Knows My Name, Leslie Lewis, Bayside College School of Ministry, and over here. Would you like to come up? Okay, come on up. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. I know it's early, but feel free to clap along. Um, this song is very near to my heart, and I hope it touches yours, too. Uh, thank you for having me here today. is not my story true to who you are you saw my heart and made something out of nothing so i don't need my name in lights i'm famous in my father's eyes make no mistake he knows my name i'm not living for applause i'm already so Stay quiet, I'm meant to be a lion. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much, Leslie. Um, I see that Vernon missed Sheriff uh, Stubbe in the background, elected official Sheriff Stubbe. And uh, <laughs> Vernon also missed Judge Nicholas, too. So, that Vernon, yeah. Okay, we're moving right along here. We want to get you out um, on a fairly amount of good time. Uh, Vernon also took with him all the information on our guest speaker, Clint Hurdle. <laughs> so, uh, he had a whole bunch of good things to say about you, uh, <laughs> sir. Uh, but we uh, we know you're a busy man. We uh, know you uh, have a lot of things to do in your life, and we appreciate you being here very, very much. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, good morning. 
it is an honor to be here. Uh, one of my mentors shared with me a long time ago, there's two types of people in life and in sport, those that are humble and those that are about to be. <laughs> and that introduction right there put me right where I needed to be. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for taking the time to be a part of uh, a very special uh, presentation this morning. I look upon, out on the crowd and I try and imagine the amount of gifts that are in this room today, the gifted people, the giftedness that we have, the blessings we've all received, the challenges that we're all going through. It's an incredible energy that can be in this room that is in this room right now as we're all together. And truly, wonderful, dynamic, magnificent things happen when you can get a group of people to agree to pull together for a common cause and when no one cares who gets the credit. And unfortunately, that's one of the challenges that we have in our society today, that we, we like credit. The wonderful song that we just, we just heard uh, Leslie sing, I don't need to see my name in lights. Many times we want to see our, our name in lights. We want to make sure you know what I'm getting done. You don't know how busy I am. You don't know the burdens that I'm carrying. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Well, there is one who does know. And truth be told, if you're in a relationship and you're developing leadership and you're a servant, many people in your life do know because you share those things along the way. You don't try and carry the burden by yourself. I was asked to speak at a prayer breakfast. That's pretty cool. I can accommodate that. Number one, I like to eat. <laughs> breakfast is my favorite meal I passed this morning. Um, I love to pray. I pray in the dugout. I know many of you pray for me while I'm making decisions during the course of the game. <laughs> One of the outstanding things we have in common, I have in common with many of these elected officials out in the, cl in the crowd and here they, so many people can do our jobs better than us. <laughs> they just don't have the job. Nor do they want to have the time involved in keeping the job. But it's a wonderful way of keeping us balanced and level-headed that we get help in a lot of different ways, a lot of different areas. I am here today also to thank you. I'm here to thank the school board. Um, on behalf of my wife, Carla, who is going to attend with me today, Carla's at home resting. She had, she had knee surgery um, two days ago. Basically, from carrying my fat backside around for the last 15 months, <laughs> because I've experienced both hips replaced this winter, so we've met our medical deductible. That's the good news. <laughs> but in my wife's servanthood, I think we blew her knee out. I'm a big boy, and she had to do a lot of help in moving me around from time to time this winter. But Carla, thanks you. I have an older daughter, Ashley, who's 30 years old. I have a younger daughter, Maddie, 12, who actually is attendance at school here at, uh, at King Middle. My young son, Christian, is the happiest kid in the world because he attends Anna Marie Island Elementary School, and that's no disregard to anybody else. He just thinks it's the coolest place in the world. So we are tied to the Board of Education. We are tied to teachers. We are tied to PTAs. We're very thankful because we actually put the kids in school for 10 weeks when we come down here. We're all in. We know we're, we're best served when we're together as a family, when we're all together. So we make that commitment you make it with us, you share with us, you provide for us, you help us through this transition period for our kids. And it made it very, very easy. It's worked very, very well. Um, our kids are thriving. They are learning. They actually have two sets of teachers. I can't imagine back in the day, I would have cringed at having two sets of teachers. One set of teachers was enough. My kids have two, they look forward to it. They have two sets of friends they look forward to as well. Um, so thank you. We also are homeowners. Uh, we have a home out on Amory Island, on Holmes Beach. We have moved in. We pay taxes. <laughs> we, we represent, and we love it here. And I'm also here to thank you all on behalf of the Pittsburgh organization for the wonderful partnership we've been able to develop. For you know, We're closing on a half a century soon, and as you've seen, the wonderful, dramatic improvements at historic McKechnie Field. We used to call it Old McKechnie Field. <laughs> Now we call it historic McKechnie Field, <laughs> the historic ambiance of McKechnie Field. 
Um, so thank you for that as well. I don't want to waste anybody's time, but while I'm up here today, I want, I want to get you to laugh. We've accomplished that to some degree. I hope I can share something with you that maybe that you haven't heard before. A lot of this will be reminders. Uh, and I want you to walk away feeling love because I'm a big, big fan of making people know that they're loved. I do it with my players. When your players, from my perspective, position of leadership I'm in, and many of you all are in as well, when they know that they can trust you. It's a wonderful starting point. It's a dynamic starting point. And as I've grown up, I've always had three questions that I've shared with people that I've had to serve, serve with, serve under, uh, be in connection with. From a, from a youngster going up through elementary school, junior high, high school, and then into professional ball and, and other areas, when I engaged in a new opportunity where I was meeting new people the first time, I had three questions. Had them when I came to Pittsburgh four or five years ago. Can I trust you, number one? Can I trust you? That, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to find out. We'll spend some time together. We'll see where this goes. Number two, do you care about me? Do you really care about me? Am I just another number? Am I somebody you check off and roll? Uh, am I the red-headed kid in the back of the room? I'm the piggy-tailed, blonde-haired girl sitting in the corner. Do you know who I am? Do you care about me? And third, very selfishly, can you make me better? Can you sharpen me up? Can you smarten me up? Can you school me up? Can you grow me up? And one of the things we're, we, we take very dear to, to our heart in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization is we are trying and attempting and succeeding on growing boys into men. Not just on the field for the game officers, in the communities, because they're going to be ex-players much longer than they're going to be players, and they're going to have an opportunity and identity to impact others in a very prominent and dynamic way, I believe. So can I trust you? Can the people that you work with trust you? Because truth be told, you're not going to make them better, you're not going to coach them up until they trust you. Think back to your days as a student or as an athlete when that person of authority came walking your way. Was it, yes, I can't wait. I don't know what they've got. It could be school. It could be home. It could be my dog. Or was it, oh, no, here he comes. <laughs> we use that term in my coaching staff. We call it the oh, no coach. Are you the oh no coach? Do you have somebody on your staff that's the oh no coach? I don't know. I've been the oh no coach, though. I'm here to share that with you. And, and I was pointed out and sharpened up, and I was able to move out of that period. Are you the one that's always correcting, always analyzing, always criticizing, always helping them be better, but in a very challenging way, and more often than not, unproductive? From a player's perspective, there's guys that would sit down and talk to me. I would nod my head. I would, I would listen to every word they said. And inside, I'm going, I can't wait till he leaves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, would you get out of here? So I, and there were other people I hung on every word. I do things for them that whatever they ask me to do, I'm gone. I'm in. I trust you. So are we developing trust? The way to develop trust, we all know, is through transparency. No hidden agenda. I'm a flawed man. Flawed man. Saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Figured some things out, still figuring some things out, but I'm a flawed man. And I know that my lesson, one of my lessons in life is to continue to learn, to love, and to laugh. Um, funny thing, um, leadership, it's service. We all know that. It's a servant's heart. It's transformational. You are definitely trying to find ways to help the people that are working with you be the best person they can be. I didn't sign up to be the Pirates manager to be manager of the year. I signed up to be the Pirates manager to be a small, a small person within a group of men and women connected together for a common cause to get something significant done. We had 18 years of losing seasons when I joined up in the Pirates, and I looked at it as the greatest coaching opportunity in all of sport. My wife thought I was nuts. If she was here today, she would tell you. We lived in Denver, Colorado at the time. And I don't know if you've been to Denver, Colorado, but it's kind of pretty. 
it's got some stuff working for it there. And I told her, this Pittsburgh thing is on my heart. It's on my mind. I believe that's where I need to go. That's where I believe I can make the, the biggest difference in the role they're asking me to work with. So I followed my heart. I prayed about it. We've had a lot of prayer this morning. Invocation. The word invocation. I did some studying for this. I did some preparation. And I always like to throw something at you that makes you think I'm smarter than the high school diploma that I've got. Because that's, that's all I got. And it's probably a small group of people in here that only have a high school diploma. But I'm telling you, I'm one of them. But the word invocation comes from the word invoke, which means to petition for help and support and to make an earnest request from a dependable ruling authority. So, as we all move forward together and we try and make a difference and we try to add significance to something to everybody's life, I thought I'd share quickly with you, you know, a story that's near and dear to my heart. It's one I think most of us, I'll be surprised if not everybody in this room can't relate to, and it's about transformational leadership, and it's a quick story. And, and to put this, just to lay it out for you, and I, my apologies to Larry Broadway, because he's heard it before. Um, I'm sitting in my living room three winters ago. We love to watch movies. I have a 12-year-old daughter, Madison, a 10-year-old son, Christian. We're watching The Wizard of Oz for the 47th time. <laughs> and at a particular point in the movie, I go, Honey, Carla, this is amazing. She goes, Clint, it turns to color every time. <laughs> at this particular point in the movie, it switches from black to white. I didn't touch the dial. <laughs> no, no, no. Honey, I got this. This is crazy. I said, this is the greatest leadership story ever. And my wife has the ability every once in a while to give me a look. It's like, Wh what? What are you talking about? I says, think about it. Our role as a leader is to provide service for another. Job as a coach, definition in the 1800 was the mode of transportation to take a person from one place to another. They couldn't get there by themselves. Coach, get it? We'll play on words. <laughs> So what happens to Dorothy? Dorothy's having a dream. She had the house. Boom, she lands. We all know she's a mess. <laughs> Twisted, wrecked. What's on her mind? Par Help me here. A little group participation. You're going to have to go to work here in a second. <laughs> she, wants she wants to go home. She needs some help, right? So she gets on the yellow brick, yellow brick road. And she runs into the scarecrow. Now, is the scarecrow the kind of person that you're thinking, Man, he's going to take her there right away? <laughs> the scarecrow's a little twisted. He's a bit of a mess. He's got some, some issues himself. Matter of fact, the biggest issue he has, if I only had a brain. You will go back to your workplace today, and sometime during the course of the day, you're going to look at somebody that you're going to match up with, and you're going to think underneath you, if they only had a brain. But what does Dorothy do? What does Dorothy do? She shares her what? She, but she shares her problem, her challenge. She wants to match up with him. Look, we're both looking for something. We can't give it to each other. Maybe together we can go find it. We're, they're going to empower each other. They're going to hold on to each other. They're going to they're take a journey. They're going to take a ride together. Maybe figure this out. Who are they running to next? Wow. You've got it all together too, right? I mean, this guy's got an axe. He's made of steel or tin. But yet, what's he missing? Sometime today, you're going to go back to your workplace <laughs> or you're going to have a conversation on the phone or you're going to be on an email and be thinking of that person you're writing, you're communicating, if they only had a heart or bless their heart or <laughs> stop dragging my heart around if you're a Tom Petty fan. Anyway, so what do they tell the Tin Man? Come on. Look at this guy, he's full of straw, I gotta keep jamming it back in, he doesn't have a brain, I lost my home, I gotta get back to Kansas, I don't know where that's at, you got, you got no heart. Come on, let's figure this out. 
So the road continues, and who do they run into? The cowardly lion. How hard would this be as the king of the jungle? Scared of your own shadow. How many times have we experienced in life that feeling? Scared to death to go outside. Scared to death to engage. I'm not going to ask a question because they're going to think it's dumb or I'm, I'm going to be rejected or I'm going to be made fun of. I don't want to try that. I won't be good enough. The king of the jungle has no... <laughs> he can't even say it. Courage. So now here the four go. No heart, no brain, no courage, no home. And they get where? They get to Oz. And what is Oz? It's a scam. <laughs> the all-powerful, the all-knowing, it's a little guy on a bike behind a curtain. How many times is what we think we need, where we think we got to go, where we think our answers, we get there and it's, what? What? What happens? What happens? For me, what happened? Dorothy found a way to provide the scarecrow with a brain, the tin man with a heart, the cowardly lion with courage, because she got them to do what? To look within themselves. More often than not, we're so busy looking out around us for answers, but the answers are internal. The answers are in your group, they're in your house. They're at your grasp. And she did eventually get home. But her goal was to serve everybody else first. And truthfully, at the end of the day, as we mentor, as we serve others, it's biblical. He was first should be last. He was last should be first. Look it up. Read it. One thing leadership is not... It's buying things you don't need with money you don't have to impress people you don't like. I think maybe somebody else can identify with that because I did not go to college, but I, I did think I, I majored in that at one particular point in time in my life. Leadership never takes a day off. Leadership has to be vigilant. It takes courage to be a leader. It takes patience to be a leader, and it takes courage to have patience in this day and age if you're in government, if you're whatever you're involved in, because we live in a society that is so result-oriented, they want something yesterday. It takes courage to have patience. Life is hard. Courage is essential. Think about Dorothy today as you go forward. The crazy little girl in the blue dress with a whacked-out dog was one of the greatest leaders of all time. And at the end of the story, you know what? I'm on to something there. Not as crazy as my wife thought I was initially. It makes sense. It plays out. It will show up. As you leave today and you go back to your groups and you're going to provide the leadership they're looking for, understand that it always, always, always will be about the people you are working with. It'll be relational. When you show an interest in your people... You develop loyalty. When you develop loyalty, that loyalty will breed effort. That effort will breed energy, and that energy will help you get the results that you all are looking for. And nobody cares who gets the credit. So in closing, a lot of prayer today. I'm not praying us out of here, but I have discovered, especially in the last few years, I've discovered that prayer is not asking God to do something for me. It is me asking God what he wants to do through me. It is not begging God to give me what I want, but offering myself to be what God wants me to be. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you this morning. God bless you all moving forward. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, and that was wonderful. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, next up is our uh, uh, benediction. It's the Star Spangled Banner performed by the Manatee High School Ensemble. Uh, Andrew O'Brien, one of our Take Stock in uh, Children recipients, uh, is in this group. And I know young Andrew, and he's a fine young man, as all of them are. Uh, and while I'm up here, I wanted to thank our valedictorian um, uh, sponsor, uh, Suzanne Luke, Lukey, uh, from the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, who was not here earlier. And thank you, Suzanne. Okay, the Manatee High School Ensemble. Thank you. Good morning. And remember us next year. And please uh, have a safe week. Thank you. <laughs>